On the Choose to Think podcast, I will encourage and empower you to engage and optimize your best thought life in practical, meaningful ways so that you can live day by day in joy, peace, and God's purpose despite all externals. This is Victoria, and welcome back to the Choose to Think podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Out of all the Psalms, Psalm 150 ranks 31st in popularity. It's the concluding song in the entire book, and commentators rave about how this is the perfect ending to this book with a universal call for praise. Barnes says it is like this, quote, At the end of all the trials, the conflicts, the persecutions, the sorrows, the joys recorded in this book, the psalmist gives utterance to feelings of joy, triumph, transport, rejoicing at the end of all, when the affairs of this world shall be closed, when the church shall have passed through all its trials, shall have borne all its persecutions, shall have suffered all that it is appointed to suffer, when the work of redemption shall be complete, and all the ransomed of the Lord shall have been recovered from sin and shall be saved, that church, all heaven, the whole universe, shall break forth in one loud, long, triumphant hallelujah. Quote, the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And that last quote is from Isaiah 35, 10. Let me just say, wow, this is a great start to diving into this poem or this song. I thought it might be fun to do the who, what, when, where, how, why approach to this psalm. So let's start. Where do we praise according to this psalm? We praise in God's sanctuary. Now, his sanctuary, when the psalm was written, was a literal building, the temple. But we know nowadays that we Christians represent the temple of God. We have his Holy Spirit residing in us. We praise God in our hearts, and our very souls. We also praise in his mighty expanse. Have you ever stood on a beach looking out to the horizon? Yeah, it's overwhelming, isn't it? Have you ever stared up on a dark, cold night at a gazillion twinkling stars that light up the entire universe? Again, it just catches your breath. Have you ever gone hiking? And when you finally make it to the top of the mountain or the big hill, beneath you is a canopy of trees and rocks and waterfalls and the sky above you, you name it. All this declares God's glory. Yes, and those are the places we can praise. But we can even praise in the ordinary, mundane, and otherwise filthy and desperate moments of our lives when we come face to face with our own transgressions and sins, shortcomings and regrets, because God meets us right there. In other words, we can praise God from any literal or spiritual position. In the heights, in the depths, in the averageness of each day. When we're changing a diaper or changing a flat tire for a stranger on the side of the road. Even Paul praised and sang to God from a prison cell. We cannot outrun God's presence or his love. How do we praise? According to the psalm, we praise with all sorts of musical instruments, such as the trumpet, the harp, lyre, tambourine, any stringed instrument, flutes, and cymbals. We also praise him in the fashion of dancing. Have you ever danced before the Lord? Seriously, have you? Well, maybe you'd prefer to make this a private event, and that's okay. But I would encourage you to put on your praise and worship music and go at it. There's nothing quite like coming before your creator and bodily praise with bodily praise and through movement. Plus, it'll get your heart pumping, and this is really good for your brain. Okay, what should we praise him about? Or why should we praise? According to this psalm, it says, For his mighty deeds and his excellent greatness. Other words for praise are adoration, boasting, or commending. And this word also means to shine. Can you think of one thing that God has done for you today for which you might praise him and give him glory? 
Mm, let's start with the breath he gave us this morning when we got out of bed. Have you thanked him for your very life today? For the fact that you have food and water, a safe place to live, perhaps a car to drive, and family and loved ones around you? Have you thanked him for his mighty deeds in your life that are actually quite easy to take for granted? You might even want to praise him for the gifts and talents he has bestowed upon you as you submit your contribution to this world in need. Who should praise? Uh, Everything breathing. That's what the psalm says. Everything breathing. We all should praise him. This is kind of a no-brainer. But what's so curious is that in Luke 19.40, the Pharisees were talking to Jesus and they said, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Well, they said this because Jesus, who was at that moment riding on the donkey colt, making his way to Jerusalem as king, And all the people around him, they began to joyfully praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Um, And so the Pharisees came up and said, hey, rebuke your disciples. Like, this is ridiculous. And Jesus replied to the Pharisees in the crowd that if the disciples were to keep quiet, the stones would cry out. And by the way, the word in Greek literally means rocks or stones. So how much more should we praise? When should we praise? Well, Get this, all the verses here in this psalm are actually in command form. The verbs there, they're in command forms written in Hebrew. They're imperatives. So when someone says, you know, if I tell my kids, put your shoes on, let's go, we're getting out the door, that means right now. So we should ever be mindful of the thoughts that we entertain and that we energize. We need to praise now. And we can ask ourselves if we're not, we can say, does this thought praise God? Is it God-focused? Is it God-centered? Does this thought reveal who God is and what he says about me and my situation? If so, we certainly have grounds for praise. As we listen to this short little psalm that bookmarks God's love for us and is an invitation for us to express our great love and adoration to him, think about ways you might praise him today, perhaps like you never have before. Let's listen. Psalm 150, the NASB version. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and flute. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Everything that has breath shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. I have one more quote for you. It's from McLaren's Expositions, another commentator. And this is going to wrap it up for us. It's such a beautiful, it just encapsulates the entire psalm and the end of this book so well. I just love what he wrote. He says this, quote, God seeks our praise. The glory of God is the end of all the divine actions. To say that God's glory is his great end is surely but another way of saying that he is love. The love that seeks to bless us desires, as all love does, that it should be known for what it is, that it should be recognized in our glad hearts and smiled back again from our brightened faces. God desires that we should know him and so have eternal life. He desires that knowing him, we should love him and loving should praise and so should glorify him. He desires that there should be an an interchange of love bestowing and love receiving, of gifts showered down and of praise ascending, of fire falling from the heavens and sweet incense from grateful hearts going up in fragrant clouds acceptable unto God. It is a sign of a fatherly heart that he seeketh such to worship him. He desires to be glorified by our praise because he loves us so much. He commences with an offer. 
he advances to a command. He gives first, and then, not till then, he comes seeking fruit from the trees which are the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. His plea is not the vineyard belongs to me and I have a right to its fruits. But what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Judge between me and my vineyard. First, he showers down blessings. Then he looks for the revenue of praise. And that's a wrap, Brain Changer. Thank you so much for tuning in. And say, if you like what you hear, please consider sharing this link to the show with a friend or a family member who you think might be encouraged by the inspiring and hope-filled messages that I try to put out every single week. So thank you so much for your support. And until next time, Dios primero y que Dios te bendiga. Chao.